Hi, I'm Kelly Forshaw here with Red Touch Media, joined with Craig Johnson. Uh, Craig, I wanted to ask you all about the Adidas Predator boot, which you designed. How did that come about? Um, well, it was never the, the Adidas Predator. It was actually my Predator. Yeah. Um, and when you say designed it, I am... Um, I spent about three years developing it, um, which is there was about a hundred designs went into the final product. But um, how it happened was I was um, some kids knocked on my door and said, "Mr. Johnson, can you come and coach us?" And I'd retired from Liverpool and swore I'd never get back into the game. Um, and all of a sudden, these kids were saying, "Well, we're not very good. Can you come and coach us?" So I said, "Cute little faces." I couldn't ignore you can't them. Say no. I couldn't say no. So I was back in I was back in football, you know. So I was coaching them, and I was um, saying, "Well, look, when you swerve a ball, you got you got to you got to bite bite the ball on the outside." And I says, "A little bit like a table tennis bat, yeah. you know, you have bit to spin bit of spin on it. Yeah. See, you know the language, <laughs> bit of spin." And they said, "Well, I said like a table tennis bat." And they said, "Well, that's fine, Mr. Johnston, but our boots are made of leather, and it's raining, and our, the leather's slippery. Right. We we yeah. don't we don't have table tennis bats on our feet." <laughs> I thought, they're right, they're little buggers, they're right. <laughs> so I raced home, I, I took a the table tennis bat cover off, stuck it on my boot with an um, elastic band, lackey yeah. bands, yeah. right? Went back out in the rain, kicked the ball, and it squeaked. Um, and balls are made of poly, polyurethane, well, they were back then. And his ball actually squeaked because, uh, squeaked because the rubber was engaging into yeah, the, with the, the material. With the material. <laughs> and I thought, they're right, the kids are right. Yeah. So anyway, I got a patent on it, which was weird, because we're talking about 1990, but I intrinsically knew what to do, because I think, you know, I've, I've always been inventive, yeah. and I've studied for years. I, I did a PhD in a major university degree in how to kick a soccer ball, uh, which is what you do when you're, uh, yeah. when you're trying to kick a soccer ball. If it doesn't come naturally, you, you, you analyze what you're doing. So that's what I did. It, how, e exactly, so I studied that. I didn't get a PhD. I was only kidding. I, I, I played played for Liverpool. I oh, know. I had I had you, didn't I? I know. I know. I know. I, know, I, know, I did. But you play for Liverpool. That's like a, a degree. Well, well, yeah, there you go. Anyway, that's the equivalent to it. That's it. That's it, mate. That's it. So, so I knew what to do and how to shape it. Um, I patented it. Took it to Adidas, and um, they said, Nah, nah, it won't work. Not interested. Took it to Puma. Nah, not interested. Nike. No, nah, not interested. Reebok, no, nah, not interested. And I knew it worked, and I thought, these, these people are dumb. Why? Like, why? I don't understand why what, you rejected what, it. Like, because it was outside of the, the box of thinking, yeah. and they were in it because they weren't footballers, they were commercial people that make shoes. They're not footballers. Yeah. So they couldn't get what I, I got, and they yeah. didn't believe my story. Anyway, so long story short, I'd spent a fortune, about a quarter of a million pounds, about three years of my life, patents around the world and all of that stuff, but I knew it worked, so I, I took it to, and I knew Adidas was, was kind of like the ones that almost understood it, because they're a football brand. Yeah. Nike was a, a woman's, oh, sorry, sorry, it was a running brand. Yeah. Reebok was a woman's fitness brand. Yeah. So that, they definitely didn't get it. So I went to some footballers that Adidas would listen to. So I went to Bayern Munich, middle of December, really snow, freezing cold, Knocked on the door, Franz Beckenbauer, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, uh, Paul Breitner was there, and they were having a board meeting, and I kind of interrupted the meeting and said, guys, you've got to help me, I'm a fellow footballer, I spent all this money, Adidas don't believe me, it's a German brand, please, will you put this shoe on, come out, come out in the snow and kick the ball? And the three of them sort of felt sorry for me, because I was a bit desperate, yeah. you know, and I was saying, I need your help. And they were like, this is weird, but we'll do it. Anyway, they came out <laughs> and had a video camera, a bit like this one, but a bit cheaper. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, so, so I followed them around. They were, they were well in the ball backwards and forwards and going, yeah, das ist gut. And, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. and they were talking to each other in German. Was the booth then at this point? Like it was rough prototype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. rough to prototype. It was, it, was, it was basically a rubber pop-out. It was like, um, it was like um, a windsurf yeah, boot made of rubber. <laughs> I was, it, was, it was horrible, and they, they laughed at me. So anyway, they put it on, but when they started kicking, they started saying, you could see their eyebrows getting serious, and they're going, ja, ja, vol, or whatever they said. So I just filmed it, right? And, and it took about half an hour, and they were going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I knew 
they got it. And they were footballers, German footballers. So I raced back up the motorway from Munich back up to Nuremberg, which is where uh, Adidas were. And they said, oh, not you again, the Australian, you know. They said, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. They said, well, we've got a board meeting and, you know, it's very important and we can't interrupt it. I said, no, I've got this off Franz Beckenbauer for you. They said, what? I said, Franz Beckenbauer sent me with this tape. So anyway, they, they stopped the meeting. They said, come in. They put it on the big screen, right? And all these guys that laughed at me, right, I think six months before, they all stood up and they started clapping. And I said, what were they saying? What were they saying? I said, doesn't matter what they were saying. I said, no, 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 what were they saying? doesn't matter. We've got to do a deal. You can't live without doing a deal. So whatever Beckenbauer and Rummenigge said on the videotape was amazing. what it was. No, no, no. No, no, no. Still don't know what they said. But I did a deal on the spot. Yeah. And, and, and now it's the largest selling soccer shoe of all time. And when I went to them, which is an interesting story, they were actually insolvent. They were trading as insolvent because they couldn't pay their debts. This was in 1990. And the board meeting was because the Dassler sisters had to sell the company for a dollar to a French man called Bernard Tappy because they couldn't pay their debts. So then I walked in with this thing, and they thought, hang on, this can... This could be the same yeah, yeah. yeah. Eight years later, um, they floated for something like a, a billion and a half dollars on a stock exchange. And the main driver, the Predator boot. And that was down to yourself? It was. What an achievement. A little bloke from Australia, mate. <laughs> Not too bad. A actually, <laughs> the poor kids that gave me the idea got nothing. <laughs> that great. <laughs> See, you're laughing, really. I'm laughing, I'm laughing, I'm off now. <laughs> I'm Kelly Forshaw, this is Red Touch Media, and that was Craig Johnson. Thanks for watching. <laughs>